morning today is uh, friday august 20th i cannot show you what's outside of my truck because i'm at the auction site and they gave me a few warnings in the past not to film film inside my truck um, but anyway so I did quite well in terms of driving yesterday and I shut down so all of, you know from Valdor Quebec it was a very long drive but I made it to uh, Gravenhurst Gravenhurst Ontario which is about 90 miles 150 clicks away from Bolton Ontario where the auction is and then I got up at 5 o'clock did the paperwork because I was lazy yesterday I had to create a bill of lading because they're always asking for a bill of lading over here so you have to create your own bill of lading and print out all these release tickets that the guy emailed me the buyer and um, and yeah I left around I got coffee there there's a Tim Hortons next door and I left around 6 so I was here at 10 minutes to 8 and the auction opens at 8 and it's all COVID protocol, you know, like the lady handles you the the uh, number for your dash, you know, like a check-in number. She doesn't even come close to you. She uses a big stick to pass it to you through the window. <laughs> I said, what? She says, I said, what's happening? Oh, she says, oh, it's because of the COVID. I said, what's COVID? Come on, time to give it a rest but anyway and the auction happened in july yeah like in the beginning of july so now the what's good about again i can i'm sorry i cannot show you outside but it's it's half empty half empty and it's humongous property so it's very easy it was very easy to find my machine because it's 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 parked next to the other pieces of junk you know this is a 2012 John Deere 850J LGP crawler tractor with six-way blade so basically the blade is humongous but the machine itself is like 10 6 wide you know 10 6 tall just the blade but the guy says uh, I was told you should be able to angle it so it'll be under 12 feet I, I need it to be under 12 because otherwise my annual permit in Ontario will not cover me. It, I'm covered only up to 12 wide, uh, 14 tall, but and this weight is not a concern because this thing is pretty light. He said it's 50,000. I highly doubt it. It's probably more like 20 or 30,000. You know, it's 850J. Just the, the width. The blade but it you know it pays pretty good so why I'm sitting in my truck and this thing is like my trailer is to my left and of course the thing was dead so I called the the check-in office she sent I asked her to send out a guy with the boost a boost truck which is a routine routine uh, task for them like they have a guy on standby with with a battery truck you know he has like a little transformer in the back one of those kind of like a lawnmower turned into a transformer uh, creates juice and so we spent half an hour looking for the battery and I said hey this is a 2012 maybe it's already using solar power no, we couldn't find any solar panels either. So eventually we <laughs> we found the battery. <laughs> it has two tiny batteries. And the guy boosted me once. Ta -da 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 -da. Then he tried, he says, okay, hold on. Give me another minute. He, we waited a few seconds. And then he says, okay, try again. 
I tried it, it started nice, everything works. And meanwhile, while he was working on it, I familiarized myself with the controls. It's pretty similar, but this one has joysticks. So the left joystick is your uh, travel, left, right, backwards. And the right joystick is the blade. Oh, I think a mechanic showed up. That's cool. All right. So yeah, because basically it died. I started driving it. It died 10 feet, three meters in front of the trailer. So I, I called them. I said, send somebody to maybe change the battery. All right. Things are moving along. So I called the check-in office and uh, where where I called before to get the, the, um, the charge truck. And they also have, turn, turns out, actually these guys are pretty smart, so they already, probably this happened many times before, right? Probably, right, because it's a all used machinery. And so they actually have a mechanic on standby, so they pay him. And so before even the uh, battery truck showed up, a uh, minivan showed up, and I see something equipment repair. And so this guy specializes in uh, in fixing heavy equipment and I said so you want me to call the buyer and see if you like you take credit cards because I said it's not my machine right I don't want to pay for it and he says oh don't worry about it he says I'm paid by by the auction he says I have a contract with the auction so your buyer will have to deal with the auction I said hey that's fine and so I called the buyer I said hey I have a mechanic who is he's gonna look at it and then uh, his uh, the auction will be in touch with you if they want any money right and this guy says okay fine yeah cool he says just get it on the trailer and he says I have a mechanic over here in Michigan so if we need help when you are deliver he says uh, that my friend will take care of that one and so the mechanic started looking and we boosted it again because the blade was too high he couldn't open the engine compartment and we boosted it again i was able to quickly drop the blade before the engine died and then he got out like a little testing unit you know where you test uh, electric power on gadgets and he tested the alternator and then I started the engine because the battery, char the charge truck was still connected. And he was able to see what's happening. And basically he said the alternator is dead. Even though the, the belt is on, everything is cool, but basically the alternator is shot. And he says, option A, uh, your buyer pays for a new alternator and we put it in. Or option B, we just installed two new batteries and so he says the, and this thing runs on 24 volts he says if we put in two new batteries you'll be able to get it on the float and then the buyer can deal with the alternator uh, you know and his yard and so i called the buyer I said okay so here's our options option a option b and he says and of course just as i suspected he said yeah let's just change the batteries and get it loaded and he says i'll take care of the alternator uh when you arrive over here and I asked the mechanic i said how long does it take to change the alternator he says a couple of hours so that's what happens when you deal with uh, used equipment and uh, all these used equipment auctions so first of you you waste time when loading and now when I deliver there, I'll have to sit for two hours before he replaces the alternator so they can drive this off my trailer. But I don't have anything better to do. Uh, I got offered a load yesterday, but it's a crazy load. It's from uh, Maryland to British Columbia. And it's like 65,000 pounds. The problem is, is that I'm too heavy because as soon as I enter British Columbia I have to lift axle 4 on the trailer they don't recognize quad trailers you need to have a stinger and I have to lift the lift axle so 
So I, I'm okay like driving through US with that load on eight axles is more than enough with a pusher down with a quad trail, right? But as soon as I cross into British Columbia, I have to be on six axles. And because I'm so heavy, six axles is not enough for a 65,000 pound load. And so I told him, I said, I cannot do it. I said, unless you want me to hook up my Jeep and the Stinger and go through Canada, but then it's just nuts, you know, like moving a 65,000 piece of equipment on nine axles, okay. but it's a, it's a drill rig. And so I know that the rear will be overloaded because it has a boom, right? So uh, even 65,000 pounds, it'll probably put like 75, 80,000 on the back. So it's, if I lift that last axle, if I take it off before entering uh, BC, and then of course I'd have to hire somebody to take that axle off, I'll be way overloaded. Like I think even a regular truck, even if you can do it on six axles, the rear will still be too heavy so you need a stinger if you if you hook up a stinger the stinger throws weight on the truck so you need the you need the you need a jeep so basically you need a light truck with a light trailer with a single axle jeep because that's what recognized in bc or a tri-drive truck and a stinger you know so because their rules are totally different than here. So yeah, I'm okay driving, you know, Ontario over here. But as soon as I reach Manitoba, Manitoba province of Manitoba, that's where the rules change. That's where they don't recognize the lift axles and the quad trailers for some reason. So I had to say no. I said, unless you cannot find anybody with a light trailer, like 35 ton trailer, I said, let me know and i'll hook up my jeep and the stinger but then i said you know permits are going to be expensive uh, i'm not going to charge you for a 65,000 pound load i'm going to charge you as if it's like 80,000 pound load right because now i'm running on nine axles i'm 107 feet long so anyway that was another option the lady called me yesterday i, I worked with them before and so that's why i got this uh, dozer because again it's only 380 miles into Michigan from here and it pays pretty good uh, but it is and it's light but it is you know 12 feet wide hopefully I'll be able to angle angle the blade all right let me go see the guy the, the guy showed up with new batteries let me go see how how he's doing over there replacing so and i just hope that the the two new batteries will last long enough for me to drive it off drive it on and position the blade properly all right so i'm out of the auction site yard and they agreed to wash it i guess the buyer made some arrangements so now the plan is now I can show you the actual machine. It's a bit scary, but don't you worry. We're going to deliver this. But the only way to, to load it was to angle it like that. I tried everything. So I tried everything. And if you keep the blade straight, it's over, it's, it's 14 feet or something crazy like that. But if you angle it and you keep the dozer, you know, straight, if you just keep the dozer straight and you angle the blade, like the buyer told me, um, I was told that the blade can be angled to be... I just want to make sure I have my door sign. In the picture. And so, yeah, I angled the blade. <laughs> it was even, you know, when I was uh, equal on both sides, it was still like freaking over 13 feet and over 13 feet. You cannot drive like that. 
well you can but you need a pilot you know i need a single trip i need a single trip permit for ontario so that's a typical ontario trailer and i couldn't find the cereal plate anywhere then i found asked the mechanic I said, do you know where these things have the cereal plate? And he, he showed me this. It's very hard to see because usually it should be on the body, right? Hello, Sergey. Hey, how are you? Yeah, great. How are you? B trains, no. I just have one RGM. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, so I want to take a picture of this. So that the buyer knows I picked up the correct machine. So now, I see I had to angle it like this. Because I tried the opposite way first, it didn't work. Because when you angle it like this, you see like the machine is turned, so right? This becomes closer to the trailer. Uh, and this is now, even though this side is much wider, but I couldn't, you know, for this to be equal, for this to be equal on both sides, the dozer would have to sit like this, which is not possible because it's still a heavy dozer, it's 50,000 pounds. I thought it was, I thought it was like it looked like a baby and then I started driving without my pusher axle. Check this out. I almost lost my mud flap somewhere. See? That means that the mud flap went under the tire. That's not good, but it stayed there. That's what counts. These are some strong mufflers. I mean, mud flaps. Um... Yeah, so I, I started driving without the pusher axle. I thought, hey, if this is 50,000 or whatever, 40,000, how bad can it be? And then I saw, I saw I had uh, probably 45,000 somewhere on the drives. And so I dropped the pusher axle. Now I, I think I have about 50 over here because it took something from the front. So now I think I'll just get 18. 18 on the front, 50 over here, probably 17 per axle. Yeah, 18 over there, 17 per axle here. And 17 over there, that'll be 68. Yeah, probably 17. But now we can, basically that's why I didn't put the, the flags on because the guy was just washing it, so mud was flying all over the place. Okay, I'm gonna put one here. And I'm a bit scared of this, but I'm gonna do like this. Mark it good. Maybe this one. See, the dozer sits. Well, I was afraid to create too much of an angle. But, you know, so basically I see if the dozer is like this, right? And you angle the blade and it's still wide. So what you gotta do is you gotta go like this, right? So basically you have to turn the dozer in the direction of the blade. You know, so if it's turned like this, it'll be it'll be more narrow if the blade is folded this way because the blade can go this way or this way it doesn't matter but at first actually I, I i was sitting like this exactly like this and the blade was pointed this way and i'm thinking wait a second what am i doing this is wrong and so and they changed the batteries and the batteries uh still worked but they're not charging 
like you, you start idling and you see a, you see a message on screen that says low voltage or something but it was enough fresh batteries it was enough to drive on and play with the blade and then I had to start it again after the guy was gone I had to start it again a few times so yeah so now I, I'm gonna send the pictures to the buyer and send him my invoice because he says uh, he'll pay me by wire transfer so no uh, no uh, factoring companies are required and I said uh, you know I cannot drive on the weekend like this right and so it's already 12 o'clock I said I told him I said I still didn't order my permit for Michigan and from here it's 380 miles right so there's no way even if I leave now without doing anything uh, which I don't want to do you know like I want to take a shower because I've been on the road for two weeks I want to get some rest and so I told the guy I said you know what let me stay home till till Sunday and then Sunday oh wait a second today's Friday oh that's another thing Friday you cannot be on the road after three o'clock in Ontario <laughs> so yeah that's another reason so I'm gonna pack it and then I'm gonna take the rest of the day off and then I can take off Saturday and then Sunday you can drive until noon in Ontario in August because there's still a curfew which kicks in after 12 o'clock so Sunday I probably just go to a hotel for two nights you know Saturday Sunday yeah and I'm gonna leave uh, Sunday morning just what I did last time when I when I had the drainage plow Sunday I moved out to the border and uh, I'm gonna order my permit now because yeah from here I need about two hours to get to my yard so it'll be probably after two so yeah I better do my quick paperwork now and get out of here before the curfew yeah that's marked pretty good you see like and then of course I'll have my flashing lights in the back flashing lights on the roof because yeah of course it would be better if that side sticked out this way but that's how the cookie crumbled unfortunately and the battery was dying so I couldn't redo it again because for this too I would have to turn the dozer you know and oh and this thing is totally uncontrollable you know like you you increase the RPM you decrease the RPM this thing jerks uh, jerks back and forth and 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 it almost hit my tires a couple of times because it just jerked forward you know oh and the thing is because it has a, a joystick you cannot turn if you're if you're s sitting still which is crazy you know how any machine if you just let's say an excavator right you can just take one uh, lever and uh, let's say the left track will start spinning so it'll be turning right but this thing you have to put it in gear which is you know they mark like F forward forward reverse you have to put it in gear and of course it starts going and then you can turn and so <laughs> let's say I just want to turn it I don't want to go right forward or, or, or reverse but you cannot do it with this machine it's not it's you know it's dangerous you know I like I said it almost hit my trailer anyway I'll probably show you some uh, some stunt driving and that's an, auc an auction by the way and it's all pretty much empty because the last auction was uh, July 7th or something like that so almost two months ago no no wait month and a half and so everybody most people already picked up their their new baby machines uh, my buyer waited a long time I guess he maybe he couldn't find anybody I don't know but like I said he's paying good money and for me like the Michigan permit is only 50 bucks just pay the toll on the bridge so oh wow I'm already getting 
getting pretty low on the fuel. Let me just go double check my chains and uh, the light in the back. That's rock and roll. As we say in Russian, кто не спрятался, я не виноват. Это я про лопату на бульдозере. So, So I ordered the permit and that was quick and easy because it's only one state. And I emailed pictures to the customer and I sent him my invoice that I made up this morning and I sent him my uh, bill of lading for his uh, records. since I've been here I'm trying to remember how to get out of here Yeah, I'm going. 
going to to the dead. It's kind of like a, almost a dead end because there's a, there'll be an intersection where trucks cannot go forward. Oh yeah, yeah, we go left. Okay, okay. Now I remember. All right, let's see. How far do I have to be? Oh, cool. See, if I'm if I'm driving like this, like my tires are pretty much on the white line. If I go like this, my blade on the on that on the bad side just sticks out, you know, a little bit. Yeah, it's not too bad. Plus, I have all the flags, and I have this. Цвета музыка. Oh, it's not too bad. Yeah, this side. I don't have to. Well, I still have to worry about this side as well because the track here, the track sticks out like this. But <laughs> so it'll be a stumper, you know, for for Michigan police. I cannot go this way, there's no trucks. Like this entire area is kind of like a bit, you know, treacherous. Because there's a lot of... There's a lot of... Oh shoot, single lane, okay. I hope I can... I can, <laughs> I can fit in there. To be millimetrovshik. That's a that's a official uh, Russian scientific term. I know. Just take it slow. All right. Let's see what's going to happen here. Uh, oh, I'm still. I'm like one foot away from the pylon. One inch. Two inches. Wow. And that's what, and actually that's the problem. Oh, check this out, Amazon. Wow. We have Amazon over here now. this time to uh, to work on my aim because this is ridiculous you know I have the blade sticking out 20 feet and I cannot hit anybody now mail you see that's I didn't do it right like all the mailboxes are on this side right so how am I supposed to to hit a mailbox if on this side Watch it, buddy. Watch it. Watch it. That's right. Um, about 
about the annual permit. So what can be dangerous is that, you know, you have the annual permit or blanket permit as they are sometimes called in US, right? And that's your blanket permission to travel with an oversized load, right? But you have to know if there's a construction somewhere, right? Because one advantage of a single trip permit is that they will, man, they will check the route for you, right? So like, for example, now I requested the um, Michigan permit and I said I-69, I-94, because that the place where I'm going is, is pretty far, actually. It's on, on the way to Chicago, pretty much the, the west, west part of the state. And so now they're going to look at the, at the computer, at the data, if there's construction somewhere, right? Where maybe there's a, a width restriction. So they're going to send me on a detour, right? So that, of course, can be a nuisance, but it can also save, save my butt. Whereas under the annual permit, I have no idea, you know, what's going on. Yeah, that's the intersection. Um, and I forgot which, I think I was going this way. Yeah, left, I think. Wait, which way was I going? If I go left, I'll be on 50, and then how do I... Mayfield... Okay, hold on. Let me just... Because I know I can go this way, and I can go this way. But this way it's a two-lane road. Hold on. Let's see. Yeah, so where am I now? Over here. Alright, so yeah, I cannot go straight. So if I go left, I'll jump on 50. And then I can follow Highway 50 all the way to where? Oh, to what is this? Highway 7. Highway 7. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's uh, Highway 7. That's already 427. And then this is 407. I think this is good. I think I have to go this way. Actually, we're... No, this way. So I'm at this intersection. So if I turn left, I'll get... 50 yeah south but if I go right this is 14 oh wait a second 14 yeah, yeah that's how I went 14 and I can get uh, to 410 oh yeah this is better basically we're looking at the which way it's closer to get to the freeway and it's definitely closer this way because here this is the freeway and here you have to go all the way down and then yeah over here I can get 410 and then 407 that's cool all right so we're gonna go this way
it's good. So yeah, if I'm staying all the way to the right, the blade stays on the yellow line. So as long as there's no uh, lane restrictions, I should be okay. That guy went all the way on the shoulder. <laughs> he kind of like jerked. Mama! That's Captain Sergei driving over here. So, stand back. You know how the fire trucks, they have that sign. Stay 100 meters back or you will be shot. No, wait. That's in Afghanistan. No, they just say stay 100 meters or 300 feet. And look at this. Are they? Are they kidding me? to change lanes because this lane actually no I do
meet you 407. construction area over there but it's three lanes three lanes so the right lane is very shallow because with the Jersey barriers feel for this load see I was able to navigate those uh, uh, the construction zones with cones that's the worst part you know when they have these cones and you have to go like this in a zigzag way because your trailer does not exactly go like that it has a off track right I'm thinking when I'm in the construction zone, I'll just I'll have to take two lanes. No big deal. Because I tried uh, when I tried to go through there with, and I had an oversized load, and I would go in the middle lane, and I'm oversized, right? And these dump trucks, guys, you know, they're always in a rush. Dump trucks try to squeeze between me and my oversized load and the Jersey barrier don't they don't care you know and I cannot go in the curb lane because it's pretty much no shoulder over there and so this time around I'm just gonna go out straight on the zipper just to get out of that construction zone because some people they are like children right so you have to protect themselves from themselves so I'm probably gonna stop the video here you saw my load I told you how I loaded it yeah it was a bit tricky but I did it myself just the guy when I was playing with the blade because it, it's you cannot see the bottom of the blade and it goes like this right I asked the mechanic the mechanic who changed the batteries I asked him to spot me and he was standing in the back of the trailer and he was just helping me with because I said I want to turn the dozer right and then I turned it the wrong way but he helped me with the blade and then when he left I turned the blade in the opposite way, the way it is now, and the load became 12 foot wide, 12 feet wide. But I'll think about it, you know, like wh while it's parked in my yard, I'll think more about this. Maybe there's something I can do to make it even, even uh, more narrow. I don't know. Like what's gonna happen so it sticks out like that, right? So 
what's going to happen if I... Again, I cannot turn on one spot, so I have to back. What's going to happen if I just back slightly and turn, you know, this way? So it will start turning. Well, the thing is, over here, a lot of track sits in the air. Right? And so... And actually, it's pointed off the trailer so if I keep going the dozer will really come close to the edge you know no forget it I don't want to because then of course I have to take all the chains and maybe if I had if I had a helper you know one of those with blue eyes and blonde hair it would be cool but no maybe blondes are not I'm not the best type of a helper because she'd be standing there. Ah, uh, so Sergey, so which way you want to go? This way? Yeah, we'll try. We'll try to deliver like this. There's a cop behind me in an unmarked police vehicle but with a bunch of antennas well I'm doing 90 kilometers an hour so if you want to stop me you better do it now Just, he's just looking. My exit is in 1.8 clicks. Interesting. charger but not a Daytona edition but, but he has a cop he has the word cop written all over because there's a bunch of antennas on the roof and the guy has black steel rims like I don't know why the why they always go this cheap? You know, they buy a car, so it's fifty thousand bucks Canadian in here in Canada. That uh, Dodge Charger 5.7, right? I got two thousand discount on mine, so I got mine for forty nine. Uh, no, forty eight. Yeah, it was fifty minus two, forty eight. But mine came with aluminum wheels with all bells and whistles, you know, with the Daytona package. And part of the Daytona package actually is the body color rims, which I really love that. I never had a car where the wheels were, you know, were of the matching color. So the dark gray car, dark gray rims. But yeah, you see, so the cop was driving behind me he checked me out, he let me go. So that means that we are good. We're not breaking too many rules today. 